This is the uh, StoreCube S600M power station. And this is me from the future. I just uh, finished putting it uh, through all the tests and uh, what have you. Anyway, it's uh, quite uh, a fun uh, little unit and quite capable, especially for low powered items, 12 volt appliances in particular, USB type uh, devices. I still put it through uh, all my tests though that uh, I normally do. So uh, be sure and stay tuned for that. Uh, StoreCube uh, did uh, provide this to me uh, free of cost uh, for review and uh, testing, but I get to say and do whatever I want to do with it. So with that out of the way, let's get into this. Okay, let's uh, do a quick unboxing on this power station. We've got a uh, cigarette style charging cable, the uh, AC portion of the cable that I assume plugs into this charging brick. Its output is 22 volts, 5 amps. So let's do some math on that. 22 times 5. So that's a 110 watt brick. And then we have some documentation. Okay, here's the unit. Uh, I like the form factor. It's it's quite nice. Easy to, to kind of tote around. Got uh, this handle and it's kind of cool. It's got a like a spring soft close feature. So even if you flip it all the way over, it'll just slowly put itself back. So that's kind of cool. On this end here, uh, we've got AC outlets. There's nothing on the back here except uh, some specs. So let's go through that uh, quick. This is 600M model, STC03600M. Our battery capacity is 529.9 watt hours, and that's at 12.8 volts, 41.4 amp hours. It's kind of nice that they have that additional spec. Looks like it's rated for 600 watts with a peak of 1,000. Uh, we have lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry. We've got 110 volt, 60 hertz output. Our max charging input is 110 watts. LED is 5 watts. USB output, 5 volts, 2.4 amps max. That's the standard USB 3.0 outlet, 18 watts max, and then our, it looks like the power delivery is rated for 100 watt max. DC output, 12 volts at 10 amps, which is pretty standard, 120 watt max. Solar charge input, 18 to 24 volts, 5 amps. That's a pretty uh, tight range there. On this end, uh, we've got uh, some USB uh, ports here with uh, their own individual uh, switch. So it looks like we've got a the 100 watt power delivery port there at the top. We've got the 18 watt quick charge port and then two standard type A ports. Uh, there's our PV input, uh, Anderson power pole, AC adapter, input. One more comment uh, with means talking about input. Supposedly this type C is bi-directional. We're going to be testing that. 12 volt cigarette style outlet there and a bazillion 5521 plugs it appears. All of this uh, stuff on the outside here uh, seems to be actually uh, some kind of metal, maybe aluminum or something. It's not uh, the normal plastic that uh, you see these uh, little stations wrapped up in. Uh, this is this is full on some kind of metal. So that's that's a nice touch, something that uh, you don't see all the time. To show you this awesome screen on this, this is something that uh, I'm pretty excited about. Uh, this is a super huge, easy to read uh, screen. Uh, it looks like we've got input and output watts uh, able to be shown here. An estimated time uh, remaining. It's calling output time remaining. Um, I don't know if uh, that will change to input. We'll test that. And then obviously uh, a battery gauge. The light's pretty nice. Turns on on low. And it's these two lights right here. And then it steps up a notch. 
and then it starts to uh, flash <laughs> and then it does strobing and then it goes off. Just a quick observation I've got the uh, power adapter plugged in here and uh, it's saying that uh, it's inputting 95 watts into the store cube power station. Got this kilowatt uh, meter plugged in over here. So like 115, 114 watts being drawn from the wall. Uh, that uh, means one of two things. It means number one, this isn't quite uh, showing exactly the amount of power going in. Uh, or probably more likely, uh, that is the correct amount of power going into the power station. And there are just some losses, uh, the power being converted from AC power to DC power through this power brick. Okay, the StoreCube 600M is approximately 13 and a half inches long. And it's approximately 5 and 7 eighths wide. And I would call it uh, about 6 and 3 quarters tall, including the handle. And this is how much it weighed on my scale. 17 pounds, 0.75 ounces. Can the store cube 600M run a high-end uh, gaming PC? Uh, we've got uh, a graphic intensive uh, benchmark running here on the computer. So it's really pushing the uh, computer hard. And uh, as you can see here, we are pulling uh, 540, 537. Uh, fluctuating a little bit. So just under the uh, max that this uh, store cube can uh, produce, you can see it's estimating uh, a little less than uh, 30 minutes uh, vacillating uh, back and forth, but uh, it's running it like a champ. Small in size, but mighty in power. And the store cube 600M run a household vacuum cleaner. The answer is no. If you've watched any of my other testing videos, uh, we know that this uh, vacuum uh, pulls a little over a thousand watts when it's running, and this can only do 500 continuous. Can the StoreCube 600M power an electric hot plate? I don't think so. We're going to turn this on minimum, and we'll see if we can not blow this up. Good. It has uh, protection in it, so it uh, tripped. That uh, is a no for that, but it does have a safety feature built in so that it uh, shuts itself down when it gets overloaded. Let's make sure it turns back on. Yep. Can the Store Cube 600M run a microwave? No. Based on the last test with that uh, hot plate, we know that it won't work and the microwave pull pulls even more power than the hot plate. So that's a no. Can the StoreCube 600M run a full-size gas furnace? Welcome to my uh, very crowded and uh, messy uh, utility room. I've got uh, this extension cord. It comes down and uh, coiled up there on the ground and then it comes up and into this uh, magic little box right here. This is the Easy Generator Switch. I've uh, installed this to uh, allow me to run my uh, gas furnace when the power is off. I'll leave a link to this installation video uh, up here and down in the description. But let's fire up this uh, furnace. I'm gonna take off the cover and uh, we'll watch this fire up and uh, see if this uh, power station can run it. Uh, right now, just in its idle state, uh, it's pulling 28 watts. Induced draft has started. Should get hot surface igniter. Yep. With that running, pulling about 114 watts. With just the induced draft running, no indoor fan. We're now only pulling about 70 watts, 69. Okay, it's doing a little uh, something strange here where the fan is ramping up and then it uh, is stopping. So uh, this uh, power station is unable to run at least my particular furnace. Can the StoreCube 600M run a full-size mini-split? Uh, unfortunately, no. 
Uh, again, in past uh, videos, we've seen that this uh, mini split, uh, when it first uh, begins going, it pulls a little over 700 watts, sometimes a little over 600. And then it'll settle down to like 300, 200 watt uh, range and just kind of coast there. So it's extremely efficient, uh, but unfortunately the StoreCube 600M does not have enough uh, juice uh, for the initial uh, startup procedure of this mini split. And for those of you wondering, this is a 120 volt uh, mini split uh, unit, 9000 BTUs. Okay, I don't usually do this test uh, with my power stations because it's a given that uh, all of them, uh, for the most part, can do this. However, since this is uh, trending to prefer the uh, smaller loads, uh, I thought I'd uh, hurry and do this test. Uh, we've got a 55-inch uh, uh, TV right here. And uh, with the best YouTube channel on the face of the planet playing. So don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> There's a trick for that. This is powering an Apple TV, that's right over here. And then uh, the sound bar, which I have muted at the moment. And uh, then this uh, 55 inch 4K TV. And uh, as you can see, it's pulling 116 watts. So with a full uh, charge, you know, you could uh, easily get uh, somewhere probably in the three to four hour range, uh, I would guess, run time on, off that power station uh, on a setup like this. So uh, I think that's a, this is certainly a very viable option for something in this size category. Got this uh, StoreCube 600M teed up for the next test. Can it start? And then can it run, and how long, this uh, full-size refrigerator? This is the fridge I use uh, on a daily occasion in my kitchen. And uh, we've got uh, its power cord coming out right here. It's plugged into this uh, power strip right here that uh, when I flip the switch, will start things up. So we've got uh, this uh, camera here to do a time lapse. And uh, we're going to uh, time and see uh, how long this runs for. First, let's see if it starts it. Because uh, sometimes smaller power stations like this can't start the fridge. So, three, two, one. Looks like it started it just fine. So, that's uh, good to see. Looks like we're pulling just over uh, 100 watts. And we'll just verify that here. Yep. It is on and going. So, let's uh, go ahead and uh, start the time lapse. Start the stopwatch. This uh, turned off, so I don't know if uh, you can see, but uh, we ended up uh, being just under five hours of time that uh, this StoreCube uh, power station ran uh, a full-size fridge. Let's see uh, if anything happens when we try to turn it on. So the screen will come on, uh, but obviously says uh, 0% and there's this funny little gas pump uh, flashing there. Okay, got a pretty uh, crazy setup here, but uh, we're gearing up for the max charge rate test. According to StoreCube uh, on their website, and I'll put a screenshot up here, uh, they claim that uh, charging it with the AC wall charger and a 100 watt uh, power delivery source, you can charge from zero to 80% in 2.7 hours. We've got uh, the AC charger uh, right here, plugged in over here, and then I've got uh, another power station right here that uh, has a 100 watt uh, power delivery output on it. I've got a cable that's uh, rated for that. So we're gonna plug that in first, just so we can see if it uh, indeed charges with power delivery port. And it uh, looks like we're going up in uh, wattage.
96, 95. So for all intents and purposes, that is uh, basically 100 watts uh, worth of power. So now we're gonna also plug in the AC wall charger. And uh, that should uh, get us up near the 200 watt mark. Looks like it. Close, 190-ish, 189. Gonna go ahead and uh, start the timer here. Uh, hit 80 percent and I uh, don't know if you can see but two hours and uh, 21 minutes it uh, beat the uh, manufacturers 2.7 hours so I missed uh, right when it uh, hit hundred percent if we look here uh, just under three hours from uh, zero to 100 percent let's see if uh, the store cube 600m can uh, run uh, a batch of laundry. Even though I have a gas-powered uh, dryer here that uh, just runs on 120 volts, uh, I know that uh, it won't run on this. Uh, there, all the other power stations I've tested all have failed uh, to start the dryer except for one, and uh, that was the EcoFlow Delta II Max, so giant power station four times the size of this boy here. So. Uh, we're not even going to test that because I know that uh, this doesn't have enough surge power uh, to get it started. So we've got a load here. And we're off. So we've got uh, the washer here. And uh, every time it tries to agitate, I don't know if you heard that, it, uh, it kind of kicks off and uh, has to reset. So, unfortunately, this uh, power station doesn't quite have enough oomph to uh, do a batch of wash. This uh, concludes uh, the testing on this uh, power station. It's a nice little unit. Uh, I quite uh, like it. Love the screen. just want to make mention of one thing about this uh, display. Super awesome. I love how easy it is to read. I appreciate what these guys did, and they've just made it so it stays on all the time. And uh, if the power station turns off or you turn it off, then the screen goes off. Uh, but aside from that, it's always on no matter what. I appreciate that. If you're going to have it to default one way or another, I appreciate having it on all the time. Just bear in mind that it's incredibly bright in a dark room. So if you're trying to charge something and go to sleep at the same time, uh, you need to be sure and either block this uh, somehow uh, or just charge your device in a different room. Now, it's not uh, necessarily geared towards, you know, heavy home backup, which is uh, what my a lot of my tests are geared for. Uh, certainly, you know, if you have a small alternating current load, AC load uh, that you want to run, this can handle it. Uh, but I think uh, this is really geared towards uh, the DC side, just uh, the, the variety of ports in that uh, department this is tailored for for that kind of thing 12 volt coolers laptops tablets that kind of stuff this is you know just totally all over uh charging and powering those kinds of devices for quite an extended period of time uh, with this being a little over 500 watt hours the uh, inverter just isn't quite strong enough to do a lot of the heavier home backup appliance type things. Around the fridge, great. Around the computer, great. But uh, a lot of the other things I uh, struggled with. If you want uh, something that uh, just excels at uh, powering, you know, 12 volt USB type devices, uh, this is a great uh, option. Uh, not so great for full on home backup. Uh, rumor on the street has it uh, that these guys are coming out with an even larger unit that uh, is uh, supposed to kind of fill that gap. So I might be able to get my hands on that, put it through the same uh, series of tests. Don't forget to give the video a like and a subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.